Welcome back to another metrology and measurements session. ME3592 metrology and measurements. Today we are going to discuss about the third unit tolerance analysis. Tolerance analysis. My name is P. Navin Jass, assistant professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rohini College of Engineering and Technology. So this is the syllabus for the tolerance analysis third unit in this unit we are going to discuss and study about the tolerances limits fits and uh, a design of limit gauges and uh, tolerance analysis in manufacturing and its further process so these are the course outcomes for the third unit by this we can able to apply the tolerance symbols and tolerance analysis tolerance analysis for industrial applications after the completion of this unit the students can able to apply the tolerance symbols and analysis for industrial applications so first one is tolerancing so this tolerancing is the permissible range of dimensional variation within the allowable limits for proper function. It is uh, derived from the base measurement. This tolerance al is also defined as the difference between the upper and lower limits. This tolerance states an acceptable measurement range from the base point. and uh, this tolerances is used to ensure that the parts will fit together and function it properly so tolerances are typically expressed as a range of values with the lower limit and the upper limit the difference between two limits is the tolerance tolerances are assigned Tolerances are assigned to mating parts in an assembly. Uh, for example, uh, when the slot is in the pot must accommodate another pots. One of the major advantages of tolerances is that it allows uh, for interchangeable pots. Thus, it permits the replacement of the individual pots. So, there are two different types of uh, tolerancing. One is geometric tolerancing and another one is uh, dimensional tolerancing. One is geometric tolerancing and another one is dimensional tolerancing. So here geometric tolerancing is nothing but it is used to control the shape and orientation of features on a part. In a, uh, when the designer gets designed the part, the part get is the entire control of the shape and orientation features of the part to the designer so likewise the same thing here geometric tolerance is all is used to control the shape and orientation of uh, features of the part so regarding this geometric tolerancing only the part is having some uh, shape and orientation if the geometric tolerancing gets changes its uh, measurements and the tolerances this shape and orientation of the features must be changed and next one is dimensional tolerancing so these dimensional tolerances are a crucial part of the design and manufacturing process and uh, the numerical range of numbers is assigned to a parts dimension indicating how much a manufacturing team can drift from the nominal measurement so this part is called as tolerance this part is called as tolerance and next one is need of tolerance in measurements need of tolerance in measurements the manufactured parts or produ produced parts have some degree of intrinsic variation intrinsic variation 
and these tolerances are used to control those variations ensuring greater consistency and proper performance from the parts tolerances are mainly used on production drawings to control the parts one of the major advantages is of tolerances it is useful for the interchangeable parts so it permits the replacement of the individual parts and next one is interchangeability now we are go get moving into the topic of interchangeability and uh, the concept of uh, manufacturing techniques kept on changing and today the same operator is no more responsible for the manufacturing uh, and assembly too various mating components will come from several shops even a small component would undergo production on several missions uh, in this conditions it becomes absolutely essential to have a strict control over the dimensions of portions which have to match uh, with other parts several parts of the same unit may be produced in different countries with respect to the availability of the trained labor raw material power and other facilities so the fi uh, it it finally is carried out at one place each part should be manufactured under the concept of interchangeability with other same pa mating part the interchangeable parts are called as uh, spare parts some of the advantages of interchangeability is replacement of own parts is so easy or replacement of the damaged parts is so easy and repair is carried out easily because the component parts can be easily replaced and uh, when all the parts are assembled or made in the same manufacturing unit local standards may be followed in this manufacturing process or manufacturing unit but some of the reasons the obtaining spares from any other source it is given again desirable that these local standards be also traceable to international standards the required fit in an assembly can be obtained in two ways one is universal or fully interchangeability and the second one is selective assembly so let's discuss discuss about the first part universal or full or interchangeability this the parts which go into an assembly may be se selected randomly from a large number of parts any component will match with any other mating component without doing any minor alterations to match them this full interchangeability or universal in interchangeability means any component will match with any other mating component without classifying manufactured components in subgroup or without carrying out any minor alterations in the mating process only such machines are selected for uh, manufacturing process capability is equal to or less than the manufacturing tolerance allowed for that part only then every component will be within the desired tolerance and capable of mating with any other mating components some in some of the manufacturing process the machines will be equal to or less than the manufacturing tolerance uh, in the considered of the part the components will be developed and it will be the variation of the work process will be completed within the entire work unit the main advantages of uh, full or complete in interchangeability is components can be manufactured in large batches economically and uh, the development works for new new creation new items are easier faster and cheaper 
because basic elements are standardized. Repair of existing machines or products is simplified because the component part can be easily replaced. During assembly, individual fitting is not necessary. It leads to the reduced production cost. And the second one is selective assembly. This selective assembly is uh, classified into number of groups. This number of groups are classified or uh, number of groups are identified with the help of process capability or tolerance desired. So adopting our automatic caging for selective assembly where parts manufactured to rather white tolerances fit and function as though they were precisely manufactured in precision laboratory to very close tolerances. The shafts are therefore so produced that their setting needs to be changed as many number of times as the, there are groups formed for the holes at the mean of value of each group. So these are the advantages of selective assembly in manufacturing process. It is the fair, clear and low cost method in manufacturing. It increases the efficiency of the process and high quality in assembly and uh, the reduced uh, cost manufacturing and scrap rate in manufacturing reduces by this method. Scrap rate is reduced uh, by, by this method in the manufacturing process. So with this topic we are going to conclude this session for the next process or next session we are going to see some more topics in the third unit. Thank you.